Hi, my name is Will, and I'll show you the assembly of Turtle Boat 3. These are components that you will receive when you order Turtle Boat 3 except the dynamic cell. Here I have XM430, but in the original package, XL430 is included. Waffle plate is one of the core components, as you will have to assemble other components on this. Turtle Boat 3 burger requires total 4 layers of waffle plates. Waffle plates are designed to be firmly occluded, but it is recommended to assemble with bolts and nuts. Here's the first layer, and four nuts are inserted in the bottom surface. You can assemble one bolt at a time, but I decided to take the faster way, so I will insert four nuts in these holes. Four nuts are aligned like this, and using your finger to hold nuts will be helpful when flipping the plates. Flip the plate and insert bolts. Second layer assembly is similar to the first layer assembly, except the bolt direction. Unlike the first layer, you will have to insert four nuts in these holes on the top surface. As you can see here, when you assemble second layer, bolts should be inserted from the bottom of the plate in order to prevent scratching the battery. And just like the first layer, place your finger on nuts and flip the plate and tighten bolts. As you can see here, the second layer has the different bolts and nut assembly. Third and fourth layers assembly are exactly the same as the first layer, so I will fast forward to save some time. Once you're done with waffle plate assembly, take the first layer and flip it to assemble the bolt caster on the bottom face. Look at the right image to figure out bolt holes. There are the bolt holes here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are illustrated in the assembly manual. Place the bolt caster and tighten four bolts.
Now, let's assemble four plate supports on the mark holes. One, two, three, four. These holes are used to assemble plate supports. The battery will be placed here. These brackets and plastic rivets will hold the battery. Insert plastic rivets in the bracket. Use these designated holes to mount brackets on the plate. Align the rivet and hole, then gently press down the rivet. Assemble other battery brackets in the same way. I am missing one of them, but you should have five brackets. Push the wheel into the rubber tire and assemble the wheel to dynamic cell horn. There are tapped holes around the dynamic cell horn and use these four holes in the wheel to assemble it to dynamic cell. After assembling the wheel, check if there is any contact between the wheel and dynamic cell. Make sure that the dynamic cell is correctly oriented. You can use these bolt holes to assemble dynamic cell on the first layer.
You can use either connectors on the dynamic cell, but I recommend you to use the top connector because the cable isn't long enough. In order to plug the cable into the dynamic cell, you have to remove the back cover. Your dynamic cell should have the back cover like this, but you can use it without the cover as well. When connecting the cable to dynamic cell, you have to push the connector all the way in so the connector is not visible from the outside. If the connector is not securely inserted, it will look like this. Once first layer is done, put it aside and let's start with the second layer assembly. You can distinguish second layer by bolt and nut assembly. You should be able to see nuts on the top face of the plate. You can assemble plate supports on 1, 2, 3, and 4 holes. The OpenCR board will be placed like this on the second layer. In order to assemble OpenCR board, you have to prepare four PCB supports. Place the M2.5 nut in the long slot of the PCB support. One, two, three, and four holes will be used to assemble PCB supports. Don't tighten the bolt because we need to adjust the supports when assembling OpenCR.
OpenCR is assembled with PCB supports by four plastic rivets. Prepare the battery cable first through this hole, then pass the dynamicel cables through the hole. Before assembling the OpenCR board, pass the battery cable through the cable passage. Pass Dynamicel cables through the same cable passage. Leave the battery unconnected until the end of the assembly. Align the rivet and PCB support bolt hole and gently press the rivet. Once the OpenCR board is aligned, tighten the PCB support from the back of the waffle plate. Make sure that no cables are squeezed in between components. Using these bolt holes, assemble dynamic cell to the second layer. Do not tighten these bolt holes until all other bolts on the second layer are inserted properly.
Make sure that there is no gap between dynamic cell and the second layer. Now all bolts are properly inserted and you can tighten them. Let's start third layer assembly with plate supports. Six plate supports will be assembled on these holes. Raspberry Pi 3 requires 4 PCB supports and having long nose plier like this will be a great help. Grab the flat face of the M2.5 nut like this and gently squash it into the slit of the PCB's support bolt holes. Hold on with your finger until the bolt is fastened when you flip the waffle plate. Insert bolts to mark the holes from the bottom of the waffle plate and slightly tighten the bolt just enough to hold the Raspberry Pi. 
Later, we need to adjust the position of Raspberry Pi. Line the nut in the PCB support and the PCB hole. Then insert screws so that the Raspberry Pi board is mounted on the PCB support. Don't tighten screws too much as you will need to adjust the position of Raspberry Pi board. Once the Raspberry Pi board is adjusted, tighten screws from the top and bottom of the waffle plate. Flip the waffle plate and tighten four PCB support screws. There are optional passive heatsink for Raspberry Pi and it is strongly recommended to use them. Remove adhesive tape and gently press the heatsink on the chip. This USB to LDS is going to be assembled next to the Raspberry Pi. However, the height of the USB connector disturbs secured assembly of, on the waffle plate, so 3x3 supporting plate is required. Line holes on the USB to LDS PCB and 3x3 block. Insert nested rivet in the holes. Use these two holes in the waffle plate to assemble USB to LDS.
If all components on the third layer is assembled, you can connect power cable and USB cable. As you can see on the right assembly manual, the pin 4 is supposed to connect with red cable, whereas pin 6 is supposed to connect with black cable. In the OpenCR board, there are three TTL connectors and three 485 connectors. You can use any of these sockets as long as it has the same number of pin. XL430 DynamicSL only has TTL communication, which has a three pin connector. Since I have RS485 Type XM430 DynamicSL, I need to use four pin socket. Place the third layer on top of the second layer and fix them with 4 bolts. Make sure that all connectors are securely connected to designated ports. Prepare 4 PCB supports for LDS sensor. Insert bolts to mark the holes from the bottom of the waffle plate and slightly tighten the bolts. Take out the LDS sensor and be careful not to damage the sensing face.
Before using the sensor, you have to remove the protection tape. Also, be careful not to damage the exposed belt. Use this hole to pass through the cable and when assembling the sensor, align the center of the sensor to the center of the waffle plate. Place the spacer in between the PCB support and LDS sensor, then slightly tighten the screw just enough to hold the sensor. After adjusting the position of the sensor, tighten four screws from the top and flip the waffle plate to tighten PCB support screws. Connect LDS sensor connector to USB to LDS and finalize assembly by mounting the fourth layer on top of the third layer. 